Hey guys, so next up we're going to tackle console commands and how we can actually use them instead of uh, debugging and testing your games, you can actually use them for gameplay mechanics in your levels. So I'll just uh, go through a quick test of what we're actually setting up today and then I'll show you how to create it. So what we have here is the player spawns and they can jump down here. Uh, just keep in mind that, that static mesh up there, uh, unlit and dark. Uh, we have two doorways here and these red um, bo um, planes indicate um, a force field so the player shouldn't really touch them otherwise they'll die. So we'll just try and kill ourselves and then we die and then the body's still there, um, falling in quite an awkward position. Um, and then we, we can use a console command to fly around. So if this is in caged air, you can think of this as like uh, the player's spirit uh, floats around. And then all of a sudden this static mesh here is on fire, glowing. Uh, it kind of indicates that you can move towards it. And so we'll move towards it and then we get thrown back out. Uh, we spawn um, with our gun and then we can carry on running around and then the fires shut off again. So what we demonstrated there was that we could use the different console commands uh, to kind of add a bit of gameplay uh, using the on the player death we can use um, a console command to give it a spirit like approach to the game and you can kind of wander around and, and find a spawn point which was that um, fiery um, glowy mesh up there uh, and then you can restore your health so we'll go into the setup and how, how to actually get that implemented in the game so if we just shut this kismet window down and we can actually show you what we've got going on in the level so you can set it up yourself First of all, we've got two player starts. We've got one here. This would be your primary player start in your level. I know I have one previously from the previous tutorial videos, but I've just set this one up um, for ease of use. And I've got enabled and um, player start, primary start ticked. I've also got a path node dynamic here, uh, which you can find in your actor classes. And if you, I think that you can find them under navigation and path node and you've got a path node dynamic there or you can just type it in that box and you'll be able to bring it up and um, so we've got that going on there that'll follow the, the player start around so the player knows where to spawn we've also got further down here we've got another player start but this time it's unenabled and got the primary start unticked as well uh, with the notes above there we've used notes before uh, you can find them in your active classes as well if you type in note or you can find them in uncategorized as well um, there. So you can add those to your scene. Uh, we've also got ways to kill the player. So I've got two doorways here. Uh, on the doorway covering across the door I've got a plane. If you just find that in the content browser there uh, you can just um, type in plane and if you have a UT game selected up there I'll shut that and have static meshes selected that's just that plane there. Uh, I've also got if I bring up the properties the material that we've got for our prototype package which we showed you how to set up before I've just put that across and I have also turned off collision I don't think that plane comes with collision anyway but just make sure it doesn't have collision just so you can actually walk through it um, so that's what we got for that um, setup there uh, obviously we got the, the UDK doorway and I've also got around the doorway if we can see that there uh, a dynamic physics volume which we'll be able to turn on and off so that the player can actually go through when it's turned off um, so I've checked pain causing I've also put damage per second at 100 if you didn't want it so punishing to the player maybe you could just have that at, um, 40 or 50 so that you know the player walks into it they get hurt they can't go through but they know not to do that again rather than instant damage but that's up to you how you balance your game uh, it's also enabled um, for this purpose and then we can dis disable it as we want to go through the level. So I've got that done twice. Uh, I've also got up here the, the static mesh from UDK. Uh, if I find that in the content browser, that's this torch pillar here. And as you can see, it's lit. Okay, so if we just find this material in, in the content browser, and because of the way UDK have set up their materials, we actually have this fire instance here. So we can uncheck that and the fire goes away. Okay, so, so what we can actually do is create our own copy of this and then add it to our package. I mean, you can change this directly in UDK, um, but generally it's not advisable and it's always better to create your own copies if you are editing anything actually inside Unreal. So what we can do is just shut this window down and you can left 
right click on it, sorry, and go to create a copy. And I'm just going to save it in our prototype package. Uh, so we'll find, go down to P and find prototype content. I'll, I'll change that to materials and I can leave that material the same. I've already created a copy, so I'll just cancel that, but you guys can hit OK. And then if you go to your prototype package, I'll just make this a bit bigger. There you can see uh, the material instance is already there. So the only thing I've changed on here is I've got the fire still checked, but I've changed this value to zero. If you can't see this, it'll be inside here like that. So you need to open texture parameter, uh, scale parameter, and you've got your fire in there. Uh, that's I've changed that to zero. So if I check it back to one, the fire comes on. So we can change this with a material instance inside of UDK like we've done previously. So make sure that's checked as one. And when you close it, make sure you have saved your package. So I'll just right click and save. So with the package saved now, we can um, close the content browser and make sure you still keep the this material selected and we can assign it to our new mesh. So I'll we'll just move this to the side, uh, close that static mesh editor, bring up the properties of this static mesh here and under static mesh actor rendering, uh, just add a new item, make sure you have this instant constant selected and just plug it in there and you should have something similar to that for me and the, the static mesh should also be unlit. Next, we want to add a material instance actor so we can actually trigger that like previously. So, actor classes, we can type in material and you can drag in a material instance actor into your scene and it should look like that. It doesn't actually have to be anywhere near the static mesh, but it's good to keep them close by so that you can reference it at all times. So, bring up his properties, uh, the material instance, by hitting F4. And also, with this material instance still selected from your prototype content, uh, we can plug that into the material instance there so that these two are talking together now and we can control it in Kismet like we've done previously. I've also added added uh, a point light movable here from the actor classes. Uh, we'll just close that down. Uh, we'll go to light and point light and we've got a point light movable in here. You could just have point light toggleable for this exercise because all I do is turn it on and off. But if you wanted to add a bit more a variety to the setup. You could, you guys could maybe uh, put this on a, a separate matinee track and have it uh, move in to make it look like you know the the fire is a lot more dynamic. But I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. Uh, so the radius five twelve, brightness three, and just using that light color. If you guys wanted to um, replicate that, um, we've also got this volume here, which is a dynamic trigger volume. This is disabled by default so that the player can't actually use this volume until they've actually died and they're in their, their spirit state. And I think that's all for what we have going on here. So, um, yeah, we'll jump into our Kismet now. So let's just open up our Kismet. And what I'll do now is I'll just delete this out here so I'll start afresh for you guys and we can start building up on it bit by bit. So the first thing we need to do is wherever we spawn, we need a player spawn and we need to attach this um, to an actor. So we'll right click on our Kismet, a new event, player and player spawned. Next we'll right click action, actor, attach to actor. And what we can do is we can plug that into there. Our target will be the player. So we can right click on instigator and create a new object variable. And we'll hook that up to the target. And we'll also give this um, variable a var name, if you click on it, of player. So then we can reference this player um, elsewhere throughout the um, setup. So next up, we need to add our path node dynamic, which we can right click here uh, using path node dynamic zero. And that's attached onto there. If you right click on that tab, you can attach them like that. Or, or alternatively, you can just drag a link like that. And next up, I'll just show you a new action, which is toggle, toggle hood. Uh, so we can just hide the hood out there if you guys want to do that, if you ever want to hide the hood in your game. So that's just showing you something new. No, no it's not necessary for this setup though, if you want to keep your hood. Um, the next thing I'll do is add a console command, as that is what this tutorial is all about. Uh, so you right click new action, misc, and the third one down is console command. And what we can do is we can add this here, plug it in there. The target will be the player, so reference that back down there. I'll try not to get 
wires cross so you can see the setup as best as clearly as possible. Right, I'll just make the window a little bit bigger. And in this console command, we want to add uh, a console command of set speed and you can call it 2.0. And what that'll do is that this changes the player speed. So uh, if ever you're in game and you want to maybe change how fast the pawn goes, you can also make it less than one. So if you give it a, a set speed of 0 0.5, it'd go half the speed. Uh, but for this setup, I'm choosing uh, twice the speed just so we can get a bit more variety in the gameplay and show you how to um, set that up. Next up, we need um, to detect when the actual player dies. So for that, we need to right click, action, event, attach to event, and then we'll just move that into place here. Uh, hook that up outside the console command. It can really hook up anywhere if you want to attach that directly to the player spawned. You don't necessarily need a console command in there. Uh, and then we also want um, a new event, right click, uh, under pawn, you want death. So we'll drag the event down to the death there. And we also need to attach um, something to the uh, event. So for this setup at the moment, we've got the player variable here, but later on, I'll also be um, setting up another pawn. So I'll just add both named variables for now. So one way to add a named variable is to right click uh, new variable, named variable, or if you check out named variables in persistent level, we have different options here and we've got the player there, uh, which we can hook up and that will reference this guy here. Uh, later on, I've also got a named variable called possesses, uh, which is um, the bot that spawns in the spirit state. So another way to add a name variable is to hold down N and left click. And I'll give this a var name of possesses. And it's not, it's not got checked yet, but when I create that later, um, that will become much more clear. So that's the initial setup of what we need really. Uh, when the player spawns, we attach this um, path node to the, the player. So wherever he is in the level, we know where to spawn the new, the new bot at. Uh, we've also hid the hood and we've also used one console command to change the, the gameplay speed. So from death, we need to um, spawn uh, another bot, which will act as our spirit. So if you go to actor, uh, actor factory, we can spawn an actor there. Uh, the spawn point will be this path node here, um, which is where the player will die. So when the player dies, this path node will be still attached to the player so that we know where, where we're spawning the player. Um, so spawn point, hook that up to there. Spawned, you can right click and create a new object variable and we can um, use that later on. And then in the active factory, similar to how we set up our AI, we can create a new object. We'll go to UT active factory AI, and we'll give him a pawn class of UT pawn. You could give him a, a UT bot controller class, but I don't think it's needed. And if you want the player to spawn with a gun, you can give him default inventory, and you can add an object there and give him a link gun. It depends how you want it to set up because when the player died, as you saw his link gun kind of flew off to the side. So technically you wouldn't have a link gun when you spawned, but for this, um, just for ease of use, I'm just gonna check that. And, and that's all you really need to change in the active factory settings. So next thing we need to do, introduce you to a new action. Uh, it's called a possess pawn action and uh, it allows you to take over a pawn in your actual level. So if you've got a new action uh, and under pawn, it's called Possess Pawn. What this does is anything that's targeted, um, say there's another bot in the level, you can actually possess them. So it adds a lot more interesting um, kind of gameplay and we can explore these in later tutorials as well. So the target will be the player. So if we hold down N and left click over this pink tab, we'll create a new name variable and I'll just call him player. And it, it finds the player that was from there. So we don't need to create a new one. And then the pawn target will be this guy that's just spawned here. And we'll give him a var name of spawned. So that now we can reference him later on. So we've got the act factory, we've got a variable coming off spawned and we called him spawned. Uh, we've got the target as a player. So now the player will possess this new spawned um, bot. And now we'll have another console command in here. 
So we'll go to new action, misc console command. And the target needs to be the player again. So rather than creating a new variable, what I'll do is I'll just hook them up to there. And in this one, uh, you saw in the spirit state, we need to add a new item. And the first one is God. And that turns on God mode so that this, this spirit can't be killed. Um, you know, so when spirits are flying around, generally they can't be hurt by factors in the world. So it's good to turn on God mode. And then we'll also turn on fly, which will allow us to float around. So that kind of gives us instantly a kind of spirit type behavior and another gameplay mechanic just using a console command. So that's pretty cool to use. And so I think we can actually test this event out as it is and it'll work. The one thing I'm gonna set up now is just this um, matinee quickly uh, of the material instance for when the player dies. So first of all, we need to select the material instance in game we need to create a new matinee called M. Well, holding down M, sorry, and left clicking, that will create a new matinee, or alternatively, you can create a new matinee from that menu. And with that selected, we'll double click the matinee. In this uh, dark gray empty area to the left, we'll right click new empty group and call it MI, or material instance, or whatever else you wanna select. If it's not referenced, it'll be a different color, so make sure when you check it, it checks that, and when you click off it, it unchecks it. It'll have a color assigned to it. So make sure they're both speaking to each other. Uh, we want to right click uh, new float material param track in there. We want to give it a param name of fire. And that's because when we were creating our new material instance in our um, generic browser here, that, that um, name was called fire. The material instance name was fire. So we need to speak to that. So I'll just shut these down. And so we got fire reference in here. So on our track, um, you can kind of bring the seconds down because you don't actually need to see it turning on. Uh, we need to add a, a key at zero, zero with the material primes track selected. We'll hit enter to add a new key on zero, zero. Alternatively, you can hit add new key here. I will scroll along to the right. That's one second, hit enter again. And this time I will right click on this se second key, set value, and we'll change that to one, and that should turn this fire on. So when we scroll back to zero, it'll be off, and as you scroll, it comes on. So you could have this going over five seconds and it shows it slowly lighting up, but for our, for our setup here, we just need it one, one second, and then it, it scrolls right up. And that's pretty much all you need to do um, for this. And you can hit, from death, we need to play this, so it's only when the player dies that this lights up, and we also need to and turn this light on as well. So we'll press, hold down T and left click for a toggle. And then on completed, we'll hit turn on. And we'll also, with the light selected, we'll have that point light there. So we'll just give this a quick test out now. Uh, we'll just play from here. So we spawn. We're moving pretty fast, faster than we normally are. And then if we kill ourselves here, uh, we've got flying around, but we've also given ourselves a gun, which I did by accident there. Uh, but that seems to be working apart from the fact that we have a gun. Uh, our lights come on, our material is checked, so all's looking good. So we just need to exit out of there. Uh, on this Axe Factory, we don't want to give ourselves a gun cancel that out and then apart from that I think we're good to carry on the setup so the next thing we need to do is um, we have we need a couple of toggles here that on death we need to turn this volume on so we can actually use it we also need to turn these uh, volumes off you don't need to do them as much because uh, you're in god mode so you're not going to be hurt but just for, for um, kind of our purposes we'll turn them off so we'll have a toggle out here uh, hold down T and left click. And we also want another toggle, left click. You don't necessarily need to, you could just have them going into the toggle input, just just so that other people coming across these can actually know what exactly is going on. So we'll highlight this dynamic trigger volume here and right click on the target. And then on death, we'll go to turn on of this. And this would be our dynamic 
trigger volume. You don't need to label these, it's just so you can follow what's going on. And then also these volumes here, which I'll bear off selecting in the top down view. I've got two of them in the doors, so I'll just select both of those, open my Kismet back up, and right click on the target and add those as two objects there. So on death, you want to turn them off. So if there's anyone else in the level, um, so they can't be hurt by them. So you don't necessarily need to do this step, by the way. Uh, and so this is change volume states. It's always good to um, label things as well so that other people know what's going on in your level. Uh, this up here would be turn on shrine or whatever you want to call it. Up there. And this is our initial bot setup. Just so you can follow what's going along here. So we've got our first setup done. Now we need to know when when to uh, actually, um, well, how to control this second bot and spawn, spawn the bot. So what we'll do now is we'll set up a new event using this trigger volume so that now that it's turned on, uh, as we turn it on here on the pawn death, now when we touch this, uh, we can control um, some new stuff that's going on. So just below the sequence that you've got, you can have your trigger volume selected. Uh, right click, new event using trigger volume, touch. And the first thing we want to do is destroy um, this, this spawned bot that's been flying around. Uh, we don't need to be in our level anymore, so we'll right click, new action, actor, destroy. We'll hook that up and we'll right click new variable and if we check the name variables uh, we've got spawned or alternatively you can create it in some other way that we've shown how to create a name variable and generally using destroy actions aren't good in levels because if a player dies and needs to respawn if you've destroyed an important piece of gameplay then it is, you can't get it back but in this case we don't need this guy back so it's okay to use a destroy action um, next up we need a toggle left mouse click and um, T, and then we can toggle them. Alternatively, you can find these toggles in new action, toggle, and it's just a normal toggle. We want to hook that up to toggle, and we want to select the two player starts in our level. So that's that one there, and that one there. I didn't hold control, so they're not both selected. Hold down control to select both of them. So two should be selected now. We'll right click on this target and add the two player starts there. That means that this one is no longer the primary start and this one will be. This one will be enabled, the other one disabled so that we'll spawn from there. Um, and next up we need to play a matinee um, from up here down to this note here. So we need to hold down M and left click. One thing that I forgot to mention before, if we check the top down view, there's actually a camera inside, if I go to it, it's actually a camera inside this static mesh up here. So I've positioned it just to look down um, from here. So there's a, a camera in there and you can find cameras if you go to actor classes and camera and put that in your scene, position it where you want. And what this is gonna represent is the spirit going into this shrine and then it throws out a fresh body in that kind of way. So with our camera, camera actor selected, we'll double click on matinee, uh, right click new camera group, although you can just create a new empty group and add a movement track. And, and we'll call this fall cam. So we'll just shut our Kismet window for now. And what you wanna do when, you, when, when you're animating cameras, you always want to add the last camera first and then add keys along the way so you can kind of have a bit of fluidity about it. So I think five seconds, maybe, actually maybe like 2.5 seconds will be better. Um, so we'll add, um, go down to 2.5 seconds, add a key on the movement track. And then if we just shut down this matinee window for a second, actually no, we don't want to shut it down, do we? Because then we stop editing. I'll just move it to the side a bit. And then with our second key selected, we want to scroll across, I want to move it down to this note here, which is there. Uh, we also want to come down a bit. I 
And then we also want to rotate the camera so it looks like we're falling. Okay, and because it's a direct line and we're hitting through there, I've got to maybe one second and add a key. And if you check out the one second there, we can maybe add a bit of loft there. And we have the camera pointing upwards. So let's just see what that looks like. We'll look through the camera here and just press stop. Make sure you've not got any keys selected by left clicking in this gray area. Stop, play. And that'll do for now. That's a decent enough animation. You can play around with those keys to make it look a bit more of a realistic fall, but that'll do for these purposes. And so we'll open our Kismet up. Uh, from the out, we'll go to play. Our camera's selected there. And now we want to spawn uh, another bot, which will be you eventually. So we'll go to Active Factory again, uh, spawn actor. Again, uh, click on the tab, the blue tab, UT Active Factory AI. The spawn point will now be this note down here where you've fallen to. And then we also need uh, a spawn coming out of here. Right click the object variable. And this time we'll call it possesses because we're going to possess this one. And then that means this one should now be speaking to there. And we, the reason why we've added this here is then it can attach to event again and then re, replay out the scenario a second time by spawning this bot and going through this process. So it's like an infinite loop. So we can keep, keep dying over and over. Not that you want to, but just in case you do. So again, possess pawn action. So a new action, pawn, possess pawn. Uh, hook that up to there. The target will be the player, so we'll hold down N for a new name variable and give that a player. Uh, the pawn target will be this guy that's just spawned here. And to take God Mode off, we need another console command, a new action, uh, misc console command. Hook that up to finished, and that'll be another player, so we can hook that up to that player there. Just put that so it's a bit easier to organize. And we'll type in God here. And because when you spawn again, even though fly turns off, you're still invincible. So we type in God again to turn off God mode. And then we also want um, to create two remote events now to loop up to the beginning of this sequence. You could just add um, big lines coming from this output here and all the way across to there. But just to keep things tidy, we'll add a remote event. So one remote event we'll call player spawned. And we did that by holding down R and left clicking, if anyone didn't know, and you can give that an event name. So that's there. Uh, player spawned needs to go um, up to here. So just move this down a bit. Select like the second one. And what we can do is we can right click on this, uh, copy the connections and paste them. And just remember the player spawn, the instigator will be the possesses name variable. So I'll hold down N. I'm not sure if this is entirely necessary, but um, it works in the setup. So just so you can be clear on what's actually going on, that's the possesses variable. So we've got player spawn hooked up to there. So when you, when you are um, you again, when you possessed yourself, uh, the whole sequence can start again. It can attach um, a path node to you, etc., etc. So that's player spawn. And then we also need um, another remote event holding down R and left clicking. And we'll call this reverse. And what this will do is just from the out there, we'll hook these up there. And then we'll move this by control left mouse dragging all the way up to here. So that what, what, what we can do here is if we just move this box to the side, um, the fire that turns on, it needs a way to turn off when you're yourself again. So when you're your, your, you are yourself, sorry, um, you can go back up to this reverse, go from the out to the reverse, and then we also need to, on reverse, turn this off. And that simple setup just means that when you are human again, uh, the fire will turn off, and the material instance will go back to zero, so that's no fire, and then that light goes off so that you can't use it. We also need to make sure that these volumes um, don't um, 
react the way that we want them to do so that the trigger volume isn't turned on anymore so we can't use it in our human state. So just off this uh, finished here, uh, we'll just drag this line up to there, turn off, but then also turn on these. You could add remote events um, for these as well so you don't have wires going all over the place, but um, that's not too messy, I don't think. So something like that. And then this can be commented enter shrine. And you just add these comments by the way by just selecting control and alt uh, and left mouse dragging and then pressing C or alternatively I think you can uh, right click and new comment. But that'll do for now. Uh, so I think that's all our setup done. One thing that I would say to keep in mind is if you want this system using over and over again, this wouldn't necessarily ideally be the best setup using this path node. The reason being is because when you've moved around and died, as soon as a player spawns again, this path node won't be there. So what you could implement into the system is you could actually use a, a, an actor factory to spawn in a note or some kind of other actor which will then be teleported to the player start. So when you die, you you have another active factory. Instead of spawning bots, you spawn a note and, and then teleport that to where the player is so that you um, the, the system would keep working over and over again because that path node would just be attached on the initial player. But that, that's getting a, a bit more complex. And just for now, I think this tutorial covers quite a lot in terms of Kismet setup. So I won't tackle that just yet, but maybe in a later tutorial, uh, we can sort that out. So I'll just give it a quick test out to make sure it works. So we start the level, uh, we're moving quick, we're running around, and then we can go inside one of these volumes here. We die, we see our body on the floor, we're floating around, we don't have a gun. This is lit up, so we can fly into here. Uh, I'm not sure what's, what's going on there, so we'll just have to check our Kismet cell on this second bit. Um, I think one of the things that I did forget to do was uh, a director track. I tell all my students this and I'm doing it myself now. You always need a director track on these um, Kismet setups especially in the matinees to control the camera. So we just right click, add a director track, enter there, have the fall cam selected, press OK, and that'll play our fall cam through. And uh, also it wasn't spawning. So we'll just check this out here. Oh yeah, we didn't give any properties to our actor factory. So what we need to do is just give this UT pawn, controller class UT bot, uh, give default inventory, and I'll give him a shot, a link gun. Like I said before, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, but I think those are the two things that went wrong. So I will just replay that now. So we run into the game. Go through these doors here. Floating around. Go to this here. We fall. And then we spawn and we got our gun again. So that we know that setup works, the light's gone off again. And um, just things to keep in mind with this setup is it's not totally test proof because um, obviously like I said before that path node is gonna be um, moved when the player spawns. So you need a way to keep spawning that path node. Also another thing is if you go into this um, this doorway sideways, for example, when the player spawns, he will be spawning sideways, so your controls will be a little bit wacky. So you need to add things like um, get location and rotation and all those things that you use um, for setups when you're attaching stuff to the pawn. But for now, that's just um, a nice use of uh, how to use console commands into your gameplay. It's not too much of a complex setup. The only new things we've really done on this tutorial video that we haven't done previously is the possess pawn and the console command. These are your two main keys to keep in mind. Possess pawn is a really powerful tool um, to add a lot of puzzle variation to your gameplay. If you have bots behind closed doors or something, you could pull a lever to possess them and they can move somewhere else. And also the console commands, um, just Google uh, maybe UDN console commands and I'll give you a full list of kind of things that you can use to change the game type in game 
Um, and so just have a play around and see what kind of cool um, variations you can come up with. But that's basically how to use console commands in your gameplay, and I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.